Okay, so again, thank you for being here. Um, I thought this might be a great way for us to share um, what On Angels Wings does and um, and how we can help and be there for the families that we serve in the area and what we do um, for anybody that might be interested in volunteering. So On Angels Wings seeks to improve the mental health and wellness of families with medically fragile children, regardless of race, ethnicity, class status, or orientation through free therapeutic photography and grief recovery services. Our motto is celebrating life and encouraging hope. And it's really important to us that that's what we do for the families that we serve. Um, we wanna make sure that they understand that every moment they have with their children is precious um, and that we wanna give them hope for their future, whether that is, um, getting through the grief after losing a child or continuing to be strong while their child, you know, battles an illness that puts their life at risk. Serving families on their most difficult journeys, um, we see, well, the stats don't lie, honestly. One in 160 pregnancies results in stillbirth, which equates to about 24,000 stillbirths annually. Uh, 40,000 babies a year are born with a heart defect. One in 2,500 pregnancies results in trisomy 18. Um, one in 6,000 of those are born alive. And the average lifespan with a tri trisomy 18 diagnosis is two weeks. Um, fortunately, we have some exceptions to that rule within um, the recipients that we serve. And that's been beautiful to watch. Um, birth defects impact one in 33 babies and one in 285 children is diagnosed with cancer. So all of these children would qualify for our services. Um, we do provide services from maternity to 18 years, and it is included for children who have a medical diagnosis that is not the result of an accident of any kind, um, but it is you know, a genetic disorder, cancer, heart condition, um, we also serve uh, preemies and we just do what we can to capture precious memories for the families. On average each year on Angels Wings provides about 200 photo sessions for families with medically fragile children or who've lost their child at birth. And we are headquartered in Springfield, Missouri. That's where we started. And we serve these areas in Missouri. Um, last year, we saw 81 sessions in St. Louis. We had 98 sessions in Springfield. And we also did sessions in Joplin, Rolla, Kansas City, Cape Girardeau, and Poplar Bluff areas. Um, those areas are not super established yet simply because there's a myriad of factors. We actually just got three new Joplin photographers and um, we've been working with Joplin and Kansas City to try and get um, into their hospitals and do what we can in those hospitals in those areas. Um, they're just a little bit slower to let us in the door, but we're working on it. Um, we're also looking for photographers in areas that we haven't yet begun to serve, like Columbia, Hannibal, Missouri, Clinton. Um, so if you know anybody in those areas, um, we would love to talk to them and tell them more about On Angels Wings. Um, we need to, it's our strategy to establish a foundation of photographers before we go strongly into the, um, into the hospitals because we wanna make sure that we have someone to answer the call when the call comes in. So who am I? Um, my name again is Michelle Kramer. I'm the founder and executive director of On Angels Wings. I am a professional photographer and um, I've been doing that for 15 years, but uh, 14 of those I've been working in bereavement photography as well. Um, I'm also a professional writer. I've been doing that for 20 years and I am on the cusp of publishing my first book I've been working on a nonfiction book about helping others grieve without making it worse for about five years, and it should be published this July. How did we get started? Um, on Angel Swings was founded in July of 20. 
2013. Um, I've worked with some other programs before, but learned from that experience that there was more I wanted to do and more services I wanted to provide. This sweet little dude pictured here is Logan. Um, I had worked only in stillbirth bereavement photography for a few years, and a friend introduced me to this family. Logan had spinal muscular atrophy, and this is a condition where the muscles start to deteriorate from birth. It's the number one genetic killer of children under two. Um, and his family had decided to take a palliative approach to his care and had a bucket list of things that he probably wasn't gonna get to experience in his life. Now you'll notice that he and mom are all dirty. Um, on his bucket list item, when I went to do pictures for them that day was to touch mud and dirt for the first time. Um, and he, mom had each of them in a little Tupperware container and he was, you know, feeling on them and checking them out and he was enjoying it until he wasn't. <laughs> and he got a little overstimulated and started to fuss. And with SMA, he had difficulty moving, holding up his head, moving his arms. So in this very moment that I captured right here, he had just mustered up the energy to throw the Tupperware out of his mom's lap and it spilt everywhere all over the floor. And he just thought it was the coolest and funniest thing ever that he managed to do that. It was the difference here in, you know, it was a beautiful, it's a beautiful opportunity to capture the images for a family when they have lost their child at birth, because those are the only images they'll ever have of that child. Um, but the difference here was being able to connect with Logan, the baby himself, and really just like have him respond to me and smile at me and just giving the family opportunities to capture these beautiful, joyful moments when they really knew that his time on earth was limited. The types of sessions that we do, journey sessions is one of them. Like with Logan, um, we do sessions for families whose child is still fighting on an annual basis or before they have like a major surgery, such as a heart surgery. Um, and we just continue to follow their journey for that child. And that's why we call them journey sessions. Um, they get enrolled in our support system. They get the opportunity to go to all the events that we hold for free um, and just continue to create special memories with their children. We also do labor and delivery, birth and loss. When I say birth, that would be for a family who got a pre-diagnosed condition with their child still in the womb. And we will offer free maternity and delivery pictures for that um, because they oftentimes don't know if that child will survive birth. Um, it gives them, it gives them that, top, that chance to have pictures done um, capturing all of those precious, precious moments and the limited time they have. And then we do also do um, birth loss. If a family, if a mama presents to the hospital and has um, lost the baby, we will go um, after the baby delivers within two hours to go do pictures um, so that they have something to hold on to. We also do what we call milestones in the NICU. These are, uh, this qualifies babies that are 32 weeks gestation and an earlier, born 32 weeks gestation and earlier. We'll go in and do pictures when they are born. And then we'll also do um, milestones, what we call milestone sessions, like when they finally get to hold the baby after they've been in the incubator for weeks or when they get to feed the baby for the first time, those kind of things. And then we also do a celebration session for them. Now we understand that um, babies born at that gestational age at 32 weeks um, typically have a large survival rate, but it is really, really scary to have your child in the NICU for two to three months. And we just want to be able to provide these families with documentation of how strong their child is and the journey that they go on. And of course, we also do loss sessions in the NICU, just as we do in delivery. And then we also have rainbow sessions. Um, if you're not familiar with the term, rainbow babies are those that are born after a family has had the loss of an infant or a small child. Um, and we go in and we will provide them with free maternity and newborn pictures 
for their first rainbow baby because there's just such a mix of emotions. Um, there's sadness and joy in it. There's there's a lot of anxiety and uncertainty after having lost a baby in infancy to have another child. Um, so we just want to give them every opportunity to celebrate um, that milestone as best as they can. So I'm going to turn it over to Caitlin for a few minutes. She is one of our journey recipient moms. Her little boy is Bentley and he is the cutest little curly blonde haired thing you ever did see. Um, so give me just a minute. I'm going to turn that over to her. If I can get this to There we go. It wouldn't exit my um, presentation. Sorry about that. All right. Okay, I think I'm unmuted. Sure. Uh, okay. <laughs> Perfect. Um, like Michelle said, my name is Caitlin. Um, my little boy, Bentley, was born with a congenital heart defect. Um, we unfortunately did not know ahead of time. So when he was born, it was a very chaotic, um, fast paced, very stressful, emotional, all the things. Um, and so he was born in Springfield, Missouri, but was quickly rushed to St. Louis, Missouri. Um, and I left the hospital eight hours after I had him to go be with him so I could um, kind of just figure out what the plan was. So when we got to St. Louis, um, we had no timeline. They had to dig in a little bit deeper to see what exactly his heart defect was, what it meant for him, what it meant for us. We had a lot of decisions to make and we knew he was going to have to have open heart surgery, but did not know what that looked like. I still get goosebumps when I tell this story because it was just so emotional. There's still so many um, feelings that surface when I think back to this time. Um, but yeah, we had no timeline. So on the back burner of things, um, we were actually connected with Lacey, who is an On Angels Wings photographer. Um, she was actually my wedding photographer, but we did not know that she also was a part of On Angel's Wings. So backside of the story, she reached out to my mom and she's like, hey, you know, Bentley qualifies for On Angel's Wings. How can we get Caitlin and Creed, Creed is my husband, um, some photos? And I was so excited to be able to make that connection. Um, Lacey wanted to come up and do photos for us before Bentley's heart surgery, just so we would have those family photos um, in case we were to lose him. And so she made a very quick three and a half hour trip um, very early the next morning to provide those photos for us. And that right there is when I just pretty much realized everything that on Angel's Wings is. Um, the dedication she had, the willingness she had to come and do this for us, um, the drive, all the things. Um, it just meant so much to me and my family. And still to this day, we're so thankful for her. Um, I think something that a lot of people don't realize is the doctors in the hospital are very blunt and very straightforward. And they told us many times, he may not make it through the night. He may not make it through surgery. Um, we don't know, you know, what life looks like for Bentley and we can't give you any idea. Um, and as a new mom, that was very, very hard to hear. So having those pictures taken just as a momentum to have, regardless of the outcome, it just meant so much to us. Um, with having an On Angels Wings photographer, the bond that we have created is so amazing. Um, I also think that it has helped um, to kind of give a better understanding of what these families go through, um, especially, you know, families like mine where my child doesn't look sick, but um, he battles every day 
with being immunocompromised. We're actually making a trip to St. Louis next week because he's having issues with his veins. Um, it's just, it's never ending. And so although my child doesn't look sick, he is. And having an On Angels Wings photographer follow this journey with us, um, celebrate the huge milestones. Um, we get yearly photos taken for Bentley, um, typically around his birthday, because we're just so thankful for another year with him since we don't know what life looks like long term. So I'm so thankful for the, um, excuse me, the photographers who are willing to learn about Bentley's condition and other conditions um, and willing to just be an extra support person um, through this. Bentley's pictures are very emotional to me um, because no parent wants to imagine life without their child. And um, so, yeah, but um, when these pictures are taken and the photographer takes the time to capture the candid moments and interact with Bentley and make sure to get special pictures of him and I, of him and my husband, we're, we take those and we print them off and we put them in a book so that we just have seriously like documentation of this whole journey. And I hope to give that to Bentley someday and say, hey, this person dedicated all this time to you throughout the years to capture your journey. And this is what you've accomplished. And those pictures are so special because photos are expensive and to have this free service for us, I'm just so thankful. And so On Angel's Wings is a huge part of my life. I have so much love for them. Michelle is very near and dear to my heart. I've connected with other families. Um, again, our assigned photographer is just someone that I can you know, talk to and she gets it and she checks in on Bentley. And it's just an extra person that cares, which is so important um, for myself, for my husband, and for Bentley as well, to just know that this complete stranger gives a crap about him. And so it's just, it's awesome. And I am so thankful for the time and the dedication. And like I said, On Angel's Wings means so much to us. And I'm just very, very thankful. I, I'm just rambling. I think that's all I have. So <laughs> thank you so much, Caitlin. You're welcome. <laughs> all right. And then I'm also going to introduce Jessica. She is one of our St. Louis volunteer photographers. She has a unique perspective on the organization. She joined as a photographer in 2015 and was with us till 2018. Then she had a few babies she had to take care of. Um, and she just came back. I'm so excited in this last September. Um, so I'm going to let her take the stage and chat with you all. Okay. Is this working? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Sorry, okay. I muted myself. No, no that's okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that, <laughs> um, yeah. So I'm Jessica. I have wanted to do something like this even before I became a professional photographer. Um, I read about um, a different organization that does this and it has been in the back of my mind for years and years. Um, so when I was finally in a position that my photography was good enough to apply, I jumped on the chance in 2015 and um, I, I I really, I mean, I loved my experience. I had to stop because I had um, two babies back to back, uh, but I came back, you know, and then there was the pandemic. So yeah, I came back as soon as I could. Um, the nature of my schedule, I generally do hospital, like in hospital sessions. And a lot of times they're short notice. Um, a lot, you know, sometimes families don't know what's going on. Um, and a lot of times they, it feels like the photos are, you know, incidental to what they're going through right then in that hospital room. Um, and I, it feels like such a service that I am providing that photos are so important. I have children, um, just watching them grow. Um, it's, it's proof of your love. It's proof that 
you guys existed and your family was was like this and they were this age and this is what they looked like and to be able to give that to a family that is dealing with so many other things at the same time who probably you know photos are the last thing on their minds and to be able to do that and be there and you know give that to them it, it feels it is such a gift and it's a gift that I'm able to do and that I am able to give um you know and I spend a week or so editing afterwards and I feel like I'm spending time with this family and and it's just it, it feels like the definition of a prayer to be with them and the thinking of them um and, and I'm not especially religious, so I really mean that. Um, so it's it's been an amazing way to you know, be a photojournalist in a very, very personal way. Um, feels like a great calling um, and I love doing it. And I, it has helped me grow as a photographer because I have met with, families in you know many different situations and I love being a person who can try to help just bring the anxiety in the room down just a little bit and you know I know what I'm doing and I've got this and you just worry about looking at your child playing with your child loving on your baby um you know there's been situations with lighting we you know you don't have there's no windows in the room and you can't move a baby and and so there's been some challenging technical situations which has taught me personally you know sometimes you have to let things go and also you know has helped me just grow technically um you know sometimes the things that a family wants and the photos are hard to do and I've just figured out, you know, you figure out what you can do. And um, it, I've learned a lot from an emotional side with how to interact with people and who are going through such a difficult time in their lives. And I've learned a lot from the photography side. Um, and it has brought me, you know, so much happiness and peace that is something that I can do for other families that I think is so important. So that's my- Jessica, can you answer a quick question for me? Absolutely. Um, because you have this unique perspective of being with us like right in the beginning and then taking a little break and coming back. Can you uh, kind of attest to how we try and always improve? I, I can say it, but you have seen it. <laughs> yes, I would say um, not that anything was bad, before, but I have seen a lot of improvement in sort of the support that the photographers are getting now, um, both with um, the, the just, just the whole logistics of all of the sessions. It goes really smoothly now. Like I just walk in and, um, you know, the form is filled out online with the nurses and people know who I am and they know why I'm there. And I can go in and I can do my job and, you know, I feel more comfortable and confident definitely now with boundaries with, you know, what I am there to photograph and what I'm not there to do. Um, and that's been really helpful. Um, and even things like the zoom calls, um, are really helpful. Can I just pick up like little tips here and there, um, just having like this face to face interaction, this consistent, um, you know, more, more consistent things like Zoom calls um, <laughs> had, had made me just a lot more confident going into the sessions personally that I, I know, you know, what, what I'm doing and what to expect. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jessica. Sure, of course. Okay. I'm going to go back to my little presentation. <laughs> All right. So I wanted to talk a little bit about um, the expectations that we have for photographers um, because, you know, going into something like this, you kind of wonder like what, what is going to be expected of me? And so I kind of wanted to address that. 
Um, we do require an application for you as a photographer that um, includes your portfolio and references. Um, we do look, uh, we do have, I'm not going to lie, I'm not going to sugarcoat it by any means. We do have pretty significantly high standards <laughs> for our photographers because you need to have in your portfolio, we need to be able to see experience with low ambient light using no flash. And the reason is, even if you don't because you can choose whether you do hospital sessions, like emergency sessions or not. Even if you don't, a lot of times we've got these journey kids who can't leave their home because they're immunocompromised and you've got to go into their home and maybe mom and dad don't have good lighting in their home. And we don't use a flash for any of our sessions because it's really invasive and can be difficult. In the hospital, they don't want us using, using them, period. Um, especially in the NICU but it can be really difficult for the child um, who maybe isn't feeling well to kind of like deal with that invasiveness. So we just across the board say no flash. So you've got to have experience um, with low light and dealing with ambient light situations. And then um, we also have these standards in place because we want to guarantee that our recipient families are going to have quality images that they are going to, I mean, almost all of our families like print their pictures and put them on canvases because they're so important to them to see these babies in, um, on their walls, to see their children on their walls, you know? So in addition to the application, once you're approved, we do have a volunteer service agreement that we actually ask you, I can't talk today, we ask you to sign. This has been reviewed by an attorney for us and it was advised by our attorney to do this. Um, especially where we retain the copyright of the images done through our services. Um, photographers can share those images in their portfolio, on their social media, if the recipient provides approval for us to share them on the release. Um, we do abide by HIPAA regulations. So this is why we have the copyright of the images because we are dealing with medical conditions and medical circumstances in the hospital. Um, we have to be able to protect those families and their information. So by retaining the copyright of the images, we're able to do that um, in the most effective way without it compromising you or your business. Um, all of these things have been put in place to protect both the photographers and the families that we serve. So we don't retain the copyright of the images because we want you know, all the power. It is simply to protect you and your business um, by on Angel's Wings having the copyright. If anything was to come up for any reason legally, we would be the ones that would be under scrutiny and it would not impact you or your business. You are the backbone of this organization. Our photographers um, are the most important thing next to the recipients we serve. There is no on Angel's Wings without photographers giving back to their community by being willing to answer the call. Um, so like I mentioned, we want to protect you. We have checks and balances in place to keep your livelihood intact. That includes the release that we have a family sign for every single session. It includes the photographer um, service agreement. And it includes the fact that we have a very like strategic system in place to make sure that everybody is held accountable. Um, there's a 12 day turnaround on edits so that we can do the processes on the back end and get pictures to families within three weeks of the session. Um, we don't want them waiting forever. Um, there's other organizations that do this and we're so grateful that there are others that provide these services, but there are very few that have any accountability for the photographers and when they get the pictures to the family and how they deliver those pictures to the family. Our photographers send the pictures to us through our gallery service. We do a quality check on the back end, and then we send the pictures to the family so there is consistency in how the family receives them, and we can verify that they were received. And again, that takes the responsibility off of you to do that. We also only communicate for like scheduled sessions for journeys we only communicate in a joint text or Facebook message 
between the photographer and the parents. If there's some coordinating to do, there is always a board member involved in those conversations because we want to protect you. Um, we have had instances, everything that we do comes from uh, an experience in the past. We've had instances in the past where um, a family has made claims that a photographer said something or did something or made a promise to do something and we weren't in the conversation so we can't verify it by making sure that we have a board member in the conversation this protects you from a from a family I mean we're just going to encounter them right there's going to be families who want to have a little bit of entitlement and trying to kind of take advantage it just happens that's reality um, but that prevents it by making sure there's a board member involved that prevents it because we'll take like, control of the conversation as soon as it goes a direction it's not supposed to, and we will set boundaries in place to protect you and um, make sure that you're not being ro roped into over committing to something. Um, our SNAP program is supporting our network of area photographers. Um, we value a photographer with a heart to serve. And so we actually started implementing the SNAP program a couple of years ago. This is um, funded by a grant that specifically allows us to do things for our photographers and show our appreciation for you. Um, every month when a photographer does a session, they get entered in a drawing. Um, that drawing is done at the beginning of a month for the previous month's sessions. And for every session you do, you get entered and you get an incentive. You get a, a little cha-ching in your Facebook messages through Facebook pay. We send you a little something, something to say thank you. Um, and then also we have our very important photographer award. Every year we give that out to the photographers who have really stepped up and shown us how dedicated they are to this program. And this year, um, well, for 2021, our winners, um, because of our grant and the SNAP program, we are taking our six uh, VIP winners to Shutterfest in St. Louis this year. Um, so we really will do as many things as we're able to um, with our budget to show you guys how much we appreciate you. And we have dreams to do more. One day, we hope to have enough coming in in grants and things like that to pay for the sessions and to legit freelance you instead of it just being volunteer. Um, so we we value you. We are be like this organization was founded by photographers, so we know um, how valuable your time is, and we want you to understand that we appreciate you. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and open it up to. A little Q and A. Um, uh, also, before we do that, I wanted to let you know that I do have some pre-recorded videos from a couple of recipients and another photographer, and I'm going to put those in the event page on Facebook tonight so that you can check those out as well. I just feel like it's really important that you all um, see and hear from these individuals and know like their personal experiences with the organization. So legit, I'm going to say. Hey, it's me. You can see me now. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go ahead and open it up to Q&A. Um, if you've got questions, go ahead and just unmute and talk away. Anybody? <laughs> I mean, I don't know who else is here, but I'm Alicia. Hi, Alicia. <laughs> hey. Um, okay, so I put into the uh, chat that um, I'm actually on the Kansas side, so I'm kind of like, I don't know, like I'm, I'm interested in being involved, but am I on the wrong side? No, not at all. Wrong side of the fence here? Well, I mean, I mean, it depends on if you went to Mizzou and um, if you're a K-State fan, but as far as this goes, <laughs> <laughs> as far as this goes, not at all. Um, are you... Uh, but you're still in Kansas City in that general area? Yes, I uh, I have a studio in Olathe. Okay, so it's not going to be, uh, it's not like an issue where we can't serve the community in Kansas. Like, that's not the issue at all. Um, it just, like, is a general, like, everybody kind of associates Kansas City with, like, both Missouri and Kansas. So we need people on both sides because once we really do... Uh, we're still trying to, like, we've been there for a while, but we're still trying to kind of establish awareness in the area and get a photographer base there that's strong enough. So um, 
and the hospitals well, there, like the children's hospital is still like, eh, nobody outside is coming in. Um, so they're still very strict about that with COVID, but we're working on it. So yeah, having somebody, yeah. like if we encounter a family who's got, you know, like maybe a heart kiddo and they go home and they need somebody to come take pictures at home and it's more on the Kansas side than having someone like you who's like, yeah, I'm only, you know, 30 minutes from where they are would be a blessing. So yeah, absolutely. We would love to have you. <laughs> um, Sarah Ireland is a friend of mine and Sarah. yeah, me too. Yeah. Love her. She is so quirky. Anyway, um, yes. <laughs> she's on the Kansas side and yeah. she was the one who suggested um, being in the zoom call to, tonight and getting involved in this. And so I'm like, okay, well, I'll check it out. So yeah. But she's on the Kansas side too. So I was, then I was like, wait, it's only Missouri? I'm confused. I mean, it's so. No, it's just an easier way to say it. <laughs> like, okay. we're actually um, on the precipice of expanding out of state. Like, I'm literally in talks with people from Minneapolis. So we have just like, whatever, it's fine. But right now, <laughs> we're going to focus on trying to get these places in Missouri that we're trying to serve, like, established. So, um, hmm. yeah. And Sarah's fan freaking tastic like she yeah, basically runs the show there in kansas city and i'm so grateful for her so i'm so excited you joined us joined us tonight alicia yep i was glad to be able to great does anybody else have any questions okay if if you think of something just feel free to message us through the on angels wings page um other than that, like I was trying very hard to keep this under an hour and I mission accomplished. Woo um, thank you for being here. Thank you for taking time out of your evening um, away from your St. Patty's Day celebrations. Yes, I scheduled it, not realizing because I don't really do anything ever on St. Patty's Day. Um, but if you were interested in applying, you can do so on our website at oawphoto.org. It's under the volunteering tab. There's also more information there. I'm going again to post a few more videos on the event page. So be sure to check those out. And thank you so much for being here tonight. I hope everyone has a great evening. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>